If I have two forces, force A going in the direction of my stretched left arm and force B going in the direction of my left leg while standing. The direction of the average of these two forces will be somewhere between the direction of these two forces, which means somewhere between my stretched left arm and left leg. And of course, closer to the bigger in magnitude force. If force A bigger than force B, the direction of the average of these two forces will be closer to A and vice versa. All right, does this have anything to do with the cardiac axis? Absolutely, and soon you will find out. Just hang on to the end of this, of this video and make sure also to check the three EKG videos I have already on the channel, the characteristics of normal EKG, how to interpret EKG in a systematic way, and how to identify any rhythm on EKG. Let's go back to the studio. What if we reverse force A? The force is now going in the direction of my stretched right arm instead of my left arm. Where do you think the direction of the average of these two forces will be? Of course, it's going to be somewhere between my left leg and right arm. This is to the right side of the initial scenario where both force is going in the left arm and left leg direction. What if this time we reverse force B? It goes upward through my head instead of my left leg. Now the direction of the average of these two forces will be between our stretched left arm and our heads, which is to the left of the initial scenario, where again both forces going in the direction of my stretched left arm and left leg. Now let's reverse both forces, force A going in the direction of my stretched right arm and force B going upward through our heads. Now the direction of the average of these two forces going to be between our head and the stretched right arm, which is extreme right to the initial scenario or what we refer to sometimes as the southwest compared to the initial scenario. Now let's assume the heart is the source of these two forces. The heart is directed downward and slightly to the left and the ventricles represent most of its mass. The heart sends, if I can say, two electric forces similar to forces A and B we just explained. The magnitude and direction of force A will be detected by lead one which is looking at the heart from angle zero and the magnitude and direction of force B is detected by lead ABF which is looking at the heart from angle 90 degrees. Now, as you probably know, the direction of each force is determined by the net QRS deflection within lead one and ABF. If the net deflection is positive, R wave is bigger than S wave, the force is going in the direction of the lead, my stretch left arm if positive in lead one, and down my left leg if positive in lead ABF. On the other hand, if the net QRS deflection is negative, R wave is smaller than S wave, the force is going in the reverse direction, through my stretch right arm if negative QRS in lead one, and upward through my head if negative QRS in lead ABF. In other words, we can also say if the net QRS deflection is positive in lead one, then the force is going at, at zero degrees direction. If negative, then the force is going in the reverse direction at 180 degrees. Same applies for ABF. If the net QRS deflection is positive in lead ABF, then the force is going at 90 degrees direction. If negative, then the force is going in the reverse direction at minus 90 degrees direction. Now, normally these two electric cardiac forces, if I can say, produce a positive net QRS deflection in lead one and ABF in the direction of zero and 90 degrees, making the direction of the average of these two forces, or what we call from now on the cardiac axis between zero and 90 degrees. This is what we call a normal cardiac axis. So normal cardiac axis is downward to the left between zero and 90 degrees. Now minus 30 to zero is still considered normal, but some call this a normal variant. Anything left to the minus degree is considered a left axis deviation, and anything right to 90 degrees is considered right axis deviation. But watch out, anything right to 180 degrees is considered extreme right axis deviation, or what we call northwest axis. Now it should be very easy to determine the cardiac axis. There are four scenarios here. First, 
if both lead one and ADF QRS complexes are positive, then we have a normal cardiac axis between zero and 90 degrees. Second, the other extreme, if both are negative, then we have what we call northwest axis between 180 to 270 degrees. The third scenario, if lead one is negative and ADF is positive, then we have a right axis deviation between 90 and 180 degrees. And the fourth scenario, if QRS is positive in lead one and negative in lead ADF, the cardiac axis is going to be between zero and minus 90 degrees. But how do we tell if the axis is a normal variant between zero and minus 30 degrees or if there is a lift axis deviation between minus 30 and minus 90 degrees? Here's the only time we look at lead two if lead one QRS is positive and lead ABF QRS is negative. So if the QRS is positive in lead one and negative in ABF, we look at lead two. If the QRS is positive in lead two, the cardiac axis is normal variant between minus 30 and zero degrees. And if lead two QRS is negative, then we have a lift axis deviation between minus 30 and minus 90 degrees. And also this, we call it a lift anterior hemifascicular block as well. When there is a negative QRS, a lead two and lift axis deviation. If in both leads the QRS was equivocal, then we call the axis indeterminate. And this is the fifth scenario where we cannot tell if the QRS is positive or negative in lead ABF or lead one. So let's wrap this up so the axis can be normal, normal variant, left, right, southwest, or indeterminate. Five scenarios. Okay, time to practice now. I have five or six EKGs to practice together and show you how easy to determine the cardiac axis based on this way I just explained. Let's look at this EKG. So lead one QRS deflection is positive, that moving in the direction of our left stretched arm at zero degree and lead AVF also QRS net deflection is positive, moving in the direction of our left leg at plus 90 degrees. So the axis is between zero and plus 90 degree, and this is a normal axis. These are PVCs or what we call premature ventricular contraction. In such case, we do not need to pay attention to lead two. Let's move to this EKG. You see the QRS net deflection is negative in lead one. That means it's going through the direction of my stretched right arm at 180 degree. AVF is positive. That means it's going the direction of plus 90 degree. So the axis is between plus 90 and 180 degree. So this is what we call a right axis deviation. As you see in this EKG, lead one is positive. The QRS net deflection is positive. So it's going in the direction of our stretched left arm at zero degree. Lead AVF QRS is negative. That means it's going upward through our head at minus 90 degree. So the axis is now between zero and nine and minus 90 degree. Now to decide if it's between zero and minus 30 or what we call normal variant or between minus 30 and minus 90 degree uh, lift axis deviation, we look at lead two, the QRS deflection, net deflection in lead two is negative. So the axis is between minus 30 and minus 90 degrees. So there is a lift axis deviation. And in such case, this is what we call also a lift anterior hemifascicular block because there is lift axis deviation and a negative QRS deflection in lead two. Let's take a look at this EKG. The QRS net deflection in lead one is negative. That means it's going in the direction of my stretched right arm at 180 degree. Lead AVF net QRS deflection is negative going upward through my head at minus 90 degree or 270 degree, they are the same. So the axis now is between 180 degree and 270 degrees. And this is what we call a Southwest axis. Now you see how easy it is to determine the cardiac axis. From now on, use this way to determine the cardiac axis on any EKGs you come across. Then confirm it with this info. Most EKGs nowadays will have the computer interpretation. One of these info is the, what we call the QRS axis, which is the cardiac axis given the ventricular mass makes most of the heart mass. This is usually accurate, fast, and easy way to find the cardiac axis if you want to save your brain energy and you are too tired to think. You can also, there's also P wave axis and a T wave axis, but who cares about them at this point? 
at the end of this video if you found it useful please hit the like button share it with your colleagues and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so thanks for watching